Hi everyone. Today we're going to try a different type of seitan. And what I did was I put half half a brick of silken tofu in my neutral bullet and we're going to use this as our liquid. Here we go. Try and get all the And we're going to make basically like a pork meat or a chicken meat because this will make the meat a little whiter. We're not going to use the beets this time to make the uh, the meat red. We want a lighter color meat. So we pureed half of a package and when you get your tofu always get tofu that is either organic or no GMO in it. And this is Oop. Leave it to me to make a mess. Okay, and we're going to add now to this mixture about two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to use my beautiful mushroom powder. That's one. That's two. And I have about a tablespoon of shish tau. A beautiful seasoning that I picked up and I'm gonna try to replicate this for you guys so I'm gonna put about yeah one to start off with it's got garlic in it but I'm gonna try and make one for you guys and we're just gonna quickly mix this and we're gonna add our vital wheat gluten to this mixture now we're going to start off with one cup of vital wheat gluten, but if we need more, we will add it. Okay, so that's half cup, and I'm going to add another half, making it one cup of vital wheat gluten. And we're just going to mix this and see if we have to add water or if we have to add more vital wheat gluten. Now a lot of people that are making seitan, they're either saying that their meat is getting too spongy or it's, um, they're complaining it's not firm enough. Now, if you want your uh, meat to be firm, you need to have more uh, gluten and you have to knead it longer and you can also another trick you can wrap it if you want yeah this is wet so I'm going to put in a little extra maybe about a quarter cup there we go We can make this even a little firmer. Yeah, it's going to need a whole extra quarter cup. And remember, the firmer your meat is, the firmer your uh, your dough is, the more firm your seitan is going to be. And it never really gets white, white, white. So we got to be happy with what we have. It's better than eating animal products, that's for sure. Now this is seasoned with shishtahuk. Shishtahuk, I can't even pronounce it. And there's so many great things you could do with this recipe. You could just pull it apart and cook it uh, in little bundles and then you can make shish kebab with this. But there are a lot of ways you can prepare this meat. Now this is no different than, it's like almost like a soy milk cream. There we go. Remember, if you find it's just a little too dry, a little drop of water will do it. Which I will add. Just a little at a time, you don't want to overdo it. Remember, less is better. 
Now this got a little darker because I put the seasoning, but if you didn't put the seasoning, it was going to be a lighter meat. That's for sure. Okay. So I am just going to put this on my board. And mix it. And the longer you mix it, the firmer and the more you're going to get more strings in your, see the gluten, the, the, uh, the stretching of the dough. So keep mixing it. And resting. Now at this point, you could either leave it as a roll. Now if you want to make this as a deli meat, you can wrap it with some, uh, some cheesecloth. And if you want to make uh, like shish kebab, you just pull little bits like this and then you can just throw it into your water. You could even taste it. Very good. Now, I didn't put uh, salt because if we're making skewers, we are going to uh, marinate it either in a yogurt dressing or whatever dressing we're going to make. So it's going to pick up the salts and the flavors from that dish. And in reality, meat doesn't have any salt in it. So you really don't have to add salt if you don't want to. And again, if you do, go ahead and add salt to your, uh, to your seitan. Notice the stretches? That's what makes it pull apart like meat does. So here we go, we're going to just knead this, here we go, we're going to cut this in half. We're going to make one into a small roast that I can use to cut for sandwiches and I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna pull it apart and I'm going to make meat for bobs. So I'm just gonna let this rest and then we will cook this. I think this is just going to make my life a little easier, eh? And there we go. That's going to be our shish kebab meat. And this is going to be sandwich meat. So we're just going to let this sit. There we go. You know what? Maybe I'll put some rosemary in here for my husband. I'm just going to roll it out. There we go. I'm just going to roll it out and I will slip some rosemary in there because he loves it that way. Here we go, roll that up, 
And this is going to be just a small deli roll for my husband where I could cut it up and make sandwiches for him. And this will grow in size, guys. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Here's my mixture. You could add whatever seasonings you want. If you want to use the beef, you use beef. If you want to use that chicken seasoning, you can use that. I put a little bit of Caribbean spice because it's nice and spicy. I put half a clove, uh, half a head of garlic. I put two bay leaves, a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and that is all I'm putting because really it's what we're going to um, dress our meat with that's really going to give us the flavors that we want. So I'm going to put this on the stove. And I am going to get it going and bring it to a boil and then we're going to simmer this. So let's put this over. And here is my cheesecloth for my husband's. You know what, I should have put some garlic in there, but can I unwrap it now? I'm not sure if I can, but we will see. Two. Like every good roast our mothers used to make, not that eating animals is a good thing, but she used to always put some garlic, fresh garlic. She would just kind of jam it inside the roast. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this in half. I am going to unroll it. I'm going to put one there, one there. Keep rolling. I'm going to put another one around there. And that's going to cook. And here we go. So we will roll this up now. I am just going to tuck it on both sides. Maybe I'll put it the other way. Now, someone asked me, what is that cloth? This is the cloth I use. It's cheesecloth. And if you wrap it lightly, it's able to expand a little more. And if you wrap it nice and tight, it's going to stay the same size as you wrapped it. So that's really up to you now, how you want to wrap it. But I do want this nice and tight because I want this to be a firm deli meat that I could cut into his, his sandwich. There we go. I'm not even going to use string. I'm just going to tie it the way it is. And hopefully this will not open up on me. There we go. So there's that. And this I'm going to drop as the water starts boiling. I'm just going to take my pieces of nuggets and I'm going to drop them in the water. Now once these are cooked, you can also bread these and make little chicken nuggets for your kids. Again, if you're making it for the kids, check out the seasonings you're using. Um, not sure if they'd like the shish tauk seasoning because it's a little garlicky, but you can season them how you want. These I will not wrap because I want them to expand and then eventually they will shrink up again. So it leaves it more of a tender meat. And those are the pieces that's going to go on some shish kebabs that I am going to make for my family. And I'll probably use a nice yogurt dressing for this. So I'm waiting for the water and then in goes my meat. Okay, so here we are. I am going to put my little roast in there. And then I'm going to start dropping bits of my meat because I am going to start simmering this. Sorry, I'm off camera. But this is what I'm doing. I'm just dropping the pieces of meat into the water, the hot water. And I will be cooking this for 60 minutes, guys, on a very, very low simmer. Do you see that water? How it's simmering very low? That's how you want it. You don't want a rapid boil because if you're going to have a rapid boil, guess what? You're going to have a spongy, spongy meat. This is how low you want your simmer. And you want to cover your pot. I wish you could smell this. It smells amazing. And there's our chicken bits. And there's our beautiful roast. So there you go guys, it's very simple. I'm going to cover this, I'm going to let it simmer, and I'll show you what my meal looks like. If you go all the way to the end of the video, you're going to see images of the meat and sandwiches we made.
Look at this, guys. I just want to show you how beautiful and light that meat is. Isn't that beautiful? It just comes to show you how this is just simply, simply delicious. You have to taste how good this is. What we're going to do to this meat now is we're going to marinate it. Oh, marinate it. God. And now is the best time to put everything in it because it's nice and hot and it's just going to drink everything up. So we're going to start off with, Erica, do you want to try the meat? Take a little bit. Tell me what you Oops. think of it. Yeah, be careful. This is going to be a Lebanese type dish and we're going to start off with marinating it. Good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to put one, two, three tablespoons of, I'm using uh, coconut yogurt. There we go. We're going to put some paprika. We're going to put about a tablespoon of paprika. And if you see that you have a sauce at the bottom, don't be afraid of it because you could always brush it on top of your meat when you're cooking it. I'm just going to put just a little more. I will put my, is my shish, here it is, my shish tauk seasoning. I'm going to put about, about a half a tablespoon of that. We're going to crush some garlic. Mm. So take one, about two cloves of garlic. We're just going to crush it right into our dish. And remember, when you're marinating it and your meat is hot like this, it just came out of the pot. So this is the best time to marinate it because it's going to drink up all the flavors. And then when you go cook this on top of the barbecue or in the oven, wherever you want to cook it, it's going to be just delicious. Now, you want to put more... Uh, more uh, yogurt go ahead put more the more you put the more of a sauce you're gonna have at the bottom and it's gonna cook uh, coat all your meat pieces so there we go I am gonna squeeze a little bit of lime to this I should have half a lime somewhere yes I do Now, if you don't have lime, they usually use lemon for these dishes, but because I have mostly lime in my house, that's what I'm going to use. It's still good. We're going to put some salt. We're going to put some pepper. And this is our marinade for our meat pieces that we're going to make little bobs in. I'm just going to taste it. Mm-hmm. So good. And that's how simple this is. It really, really is. So this, you know what, there's so little yogurt left. I think I'm going to put everything in here. And this way, I don't have to find another container for it. There we go. And now, the longer this stays in the fridge, the more it picks up the flavor. So, this is going to marinate a little longer. Every once in a while, I'm going to give it a good shake. And then we're going to be able to spear them up and put them either on the grill or in the oven so that's how simple how simple this dish is it really really is my husband's uh, sandwich meat and I'm gonna keep it tied up until it gets cold but it really really is easy guys it doesn't take a lot of time to make seitan and then it stays in the fridge 
just prepare everything put it in the fridge whenever you're ready to make your dinner or whatever dish you're making you have everything handy if you want to keep this meat uh, without the marinade you could keep it simple in a little bit of broth you don't even have to put the broth but the broth will uh, give it all the flavors that it was cooked into that you cooked your meat in and then you could do whatever you want with it you could turn them into nuggets however you choose to make your dish but look at all the meat you've got with just one cup of vital wheat gluten and like I said this is not for everybody a lot of people just want to eat plants go ahead that's fine that's how I eat but my husband doesn't eat that way my husband wants to have his sandwiches uh, he not that he always has gluten no I'll make him uh, red pepper sandwiches I'll make him mushroom sandwiches um, he'll have leftover pasta so it's not that he eats gluten every day but once in a while he doesn't mind having a little bit of this meat with a little bit of mustard a tomato and some lettuce in between his bread for lunch so it really is versatile it's really what you want to do with it here's our little a little bobs marinating that beautiful yogurt and these are going to go on the grill till they get nice and golden and that's going to go next to either side of, a side of potato wedges or a little bit of rice so it's that simple guys okay I just want to show you it's still too hot to cut but I'm gonna tempt it anyhow like I said this is all gonna be a lot better when it comes tomorrow or later on tonight really my god I wish you could taste this with the garlic and the rosemary to die for the inside so I can show you there we are and that's going to be his lunch meat so I hope you guys like this recipe and if you do give me a thumbs up share this recipe with your friends and I'll see you in the next one